Welcome back to the bonus round right here on GT. I'm Jeff Keeley here with Glenn Schofield, Shane Satterfield, and Garnet Lee. And this week we are going to look at the Nintendo Wii U. It has now launched and we're going to kind of talk about our thoughts on the launch and what we can expect from Nintendo leading into 2013. Uh, so let's start with, with Wii U launch. Uh, overall, uh, you know, it came out. Uh, it seems like it's hard to get in certain parts of the country yet in other places on Twitter and stuff. I see that there were a lot of them sitting around over Thanksgiving weekend. How do we think it's, it's, it's doing? I don't feel the same buzz around the Wii U that there was around the Wii in terms of that mainstream phenomenon that you know, Wii Sports kind of birthed. But at the same point, you know, there are a lot of games out for the system. I've had fun playing around with it. I like things like the Miiverse and some of the ideas, uh, the eShop, and you know, downloading all these games is great. Uh, let me start with you, Garnet. I mean, what's, what's the tale of the tape so far on, on Wii U for you? Well, you know, it's really tough to get a tale of the tape anymore, right? Because we don't have as many good retail figures. There's a lot of online purchasing. But the reality to me of what I'm seeing is, you know, we started off with critics saying, well, I don't know about it and getting skeptical about it. But what I see is I see a lot of people talking about how much fun they're having with the machine. And to me, I started to get that feeling of it's another Nintendo hit. It's another one of these Nintendo devices that people don't necessarily catch at first or the critics get a little skeptical of. But people who are gamers take it home, even if they're not big gamers, take it home, set it up in front of the family. Everybody has a great time playing with it. And boom, you're back on the Nintendo train again. Well, one thing Shane and I were talking about before that I found really interesting is that the idea of the gamepad as a second screen where you can actually play all the games on the gamepad while you know, someone else is watching television. And I had fun, like last week I'm playing this game, Little Inferno, just all on the gamepad, not even looking at the TV screen. And I mean, it's a fun device just to play all these games in your lap, right? Yeah. I feel like I underestimated the power of something so simple. And I feel like I do this a lot with Nintendo. Uh, they kind of tell you something, and you're like, oh, that sounds like an idea I don't really care about. And then once you get your hands on it, you realize that it was really smart and something that you appreciate a lot more than you thought you did. Um, just being able to walk around my apartment and play games anywhere in my apartment I want to, I didn't think that that would be a big draw to me, but it is. Yeah. Um, but to me, the big concern with the Wii U is that there's a big barrier to entry there. Like with the Wii, it was very simple. It's like, here, hold this in your hand. Now swing it like a tennis racket. Now throw a bowling ball. Everybody gets that. Everyone's done that throughout their lives. It was very easy for people in nursing homes to get it. There was, it broke down the barrier between people like us who play a ton of games and the people who don't play games at all. And I feel like that is where maybe they've missed the boat with the Wii U. You look at it and you're like, well, what am I supposed to do? It's very, even for people who are used to navigating a lot of menus and options, it's cumbersome to set up a lot of the stuff in the system, to figure out how to use the Miiverse is kind of confusing unless you've kind of lived and breathed it for the last year. I just don't see that accessibility with the Wii U that I saw with the Wii, and I think that that could have a big effect on, right, on it right out of the gate and for its long-term implications. No, that's a good point, because even the Wii Remote, you can use it with a bunch of the games in Nintendo Land, but it's, it's kind of complicated under pairing all these remotes. The other part, too, is that you need so Wait, much hold on. gear. Now, now we're talking about like a tablet being a, a strange thing. I think Apple might well, have an argument against that. I mean, we've become a tablet society. But it's a tablet with a control. I mean, I, I get what you're saying. It's not There's not that pick up and play, though. I don't know. I, I think people really get tablets. I think a touch no, screen No, they, they do hand, get it, like, but we're not talking sense. about the people that get tablets. We're talking about the people that the Wii brought in, which were people who never played games. You know, women in their 50s and 60s were playing the Wii. Who use their iPads all the time. It's the same thing. It's, it's, they sort but of, are they, they playing they, games on the iPad? That's a good question. Right. But they could have hit the same thing here. Of, Anybody like, I can figure out how to touch a Safari icon and surf the internet on their <laughs> iPad. I mean, it's not that complicated. We're talking about the Wii U is not the same as using an iPad to surf the internet or go on Twitter or shop at Macy's. I mean, there's a big well, difference. Right. iPad has dual touch. Right. <laughs> I love seeing touch, these, yeah. uh, some of these Nintendo games in HD. Yeah, that, I will say, like, yeah, see Mario great, in HD. Right? I mean, they, you know, graphics, it's just great to see stuff in HD. Yeah. What's your take, though, on, on Wii U from sort of a developer perspective? I mean, there's lots of talk about, is it, you know, as powerful as the other systems? Reggie recently said on CNN that it's more powerful than the 360 and PS3. Um, I mean, when you look at the games here, I mean, I feel like we're seeing games that are kind of at parity with what we're seeing on other systems. Yeah, I, I think so. That, that's what it felt like to me. But um, I'm going to tell you, I had a blast. Um, it was a little complicated taking it out and you know setting it up, but you know nowadays uh, you know you can do it in 20 minutes or whatever. But you know I really enjoyed it, and and I thought that the uh, the pad itself was very tactile. You know I knew when I was hitting hitting something, um, you know more so than say my iPad. Right. But um, you know 
I'm, I'm playing Zombies U. I, I had a blast. I mean, it felt like one of the scariest games I had played in a long time. And um, it really sucked me in. And again, as a developer, we never bet against Nintendo. No, I, I think everyone agrees there's some cool ideas there. I think the, the challenge will be in 2013 now with, you know, rumors of a new Xbox and a new PlayStation being, you know, even better graphically. Nintendo's kind of, a, a, you know, at parity with the existing systems. And we look at 2013, and right now, you know, there are a lot of big games for next year we talked about earlier that are coming out. I don't think any of them have really been announced for Wii U when you look at, you know, GTA or Bioshock or Dead Space or, you know, obviously, you know, Sony and Microsoft first party games aren't going to be there. And Nintendo's got, I think, you know, Pikmin um, announced so far for the system. I mean, is, is, are you guys concerned about what 2013 is going to look like for the Wii U? I think yeah. because it's not flying off the shelves right. would be a concern. Yeah. Uh, well, if it's not concern. flying off the shelves. If it's, I mean, I had no problem picking one up a couple weeks ago. All right, hold that thought, guys. We're going to be right back here on the bonus round.